Why do bad things happen to good people? Coronavirus, cancer, the untimely death of a child or a loved one. The assumption is we believe that we are good people. The problem is we come to that conclusion by comparing ourselves to other people when we ought to compare ourselves to God in the person of Jesus Christ, the only good and righteous person who's ever lived. As I am angered by the evil and the injustice I see in the world, especially when I see bad things happen to those I consider good people, I turn my attention back to Jesus Christ. Here we see God who became a man who was betrayed and brutally murdered. He was spit upon, his beard plucked out, his back was whipped. He was beaten beyond recognition and he died a criminal's death. I'm reminded of Paul's words here in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In other words, God the Father made him, Jesus, to become sin for us. Jesus took our sins upon himself and nailed them to the cross. And then he was risen from the dead so that our hope may be in a living Savior. And now all of the righteousness and right standing and goodness that's in Jesus is accredited to us when we believe that he lived the life we ought to live but can't because we're selfish and sinful and broken. And he died the death that we deserve as criminals in God's sight by virtue of just being born sinners and is risen from the dead. All of his goodness is now applied to us. That's good news. Look, the world we live in is much different than the world God made in the beginning where there was no divorce or decay or despair or loss, any of those things. And so we're tempted at times to be angry with God. Be angry, but be angry with Satan, the enemy, that devil who introduced loss and death and despair into our world. Instead of being angry, though, place your hope in God who has taken the murder of Jesus and used that as part of the process to give us that resurrection and empty tune and hope. Look, whatever your cross, whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is someone you love is going through, remember we have a God who is working things that the enemy means for our demise together for good for us. Whether we see that good this side of heaven or the next, we know that he will someday remove the sting of death and he's going to turn it all around. And so this symbol of the cross, once a symbol of shame and death, is now a symbol of victory for you and me. Chaplain Jason Owen here, pastor at Camp Courtney Chapel, I want to remind you that God will never leave you nor forsake you.